The salaries are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I know a lot of doctors who don't even make nearly this much money and they've been in school for like eight to 10 years and they have a ton of student loans to pay off. As I'm recording this, it's the beginning of 2022. And a few days ago, Levels.FYI released their annual end of year pay report for 2021. So every year they release this super interesting report that shows some of the highest paying tech companies in the past year, as well as the cities with the highest median software engineering salaries. Now let's take a look at which tech companies offer the highest compensation packages. The top paying company for entry level engineers is Two Sigma, which is a hedge fund based in New York. But looking at the top entry level salaries here, um, so fresh grads up to about two years of experience, you obviously see some of the super well-known tech companies like Lyft, um, Stripe, Netflix, they all pay upwards of around 200 to 250K USD. The report is aggregated by your role or career level. So whether you're entry level, senior, staff, etc. First impressions looking at these numbers, I think the salaries are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I know a lot of doctors who don't even make nearly this much money and they've been in school for like eight to 10 years and they have a ton of student loans to pay. Off. So to come straight out of a four-year degree and be offered $250,000 is just insane to me. By the way, guys, when you're looking at these numbers, don't get discouraged. The vast majority of engineers aren't making this. These salaries are the top of the top. These salaries and compensation packages are definitely aspirational. If you have the discipline and if you have the drive, getting hired by these top companies is well within your reach. It might take months, even years of grinding leak code, brushing up on your system design. I honestly believe that if you're willing to put in the work, this is within reach. All right, now looking at um, the, the mid-level engineers, so someone with about two to five years of experience. Now the total compensation goes up to over 300,000 USD. And the top paying companies are Roblox, Cruise, and I actually don't know what Cruise is, and um, Instacart. And again, you see some of the tech companies from the previous table like Lyft, Box, Stripe, DoorDash. So one interesting thing to note looking at these two levels is that you don't see the typical Fang or I guess Mang companies in the mid-level and entry-level roles. It could be that these Fang companies are able to offer lower salaries because of their reputation as a top tech company and they're able to attract talent based on name alone. And it's these other startups that have to offer higher salaries in order to be able to compete with Fang companies. So now looking at the top paying company for senior level engineers, which is someone with about five or more years of experience, Netflix comes out on top with a whopping half a million dollar compensation package. They are pretty notorious for having a really intense and cutthroat culture, and that might not be for everybody. Also, from what I understand, uh, Netflix only hires senior engineers. They have hired senior engineers with only two years of experience. So don't let the fact that you have less than five years of experience um, discourage you. It's not necessarily like the years of experience you have, but really what you've done in those years. Also, if you found this video helpful so far or useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for weekly videos on the tech industry and software development careers. If you're interested in looking at this report yourself, I will um, share the link below in the description. I think these numbers are a fantastic tool for us as engineers to have because it's essential you go into salary negotiation prepared with a good understanding of your market value and of course an idea of what you should be getting paid based on your skills and your experience. And now we've moved on to um, staff level engineers. Typically these are engineers 
leaders with over 10 years of experience. They are probably leading their teams. They have been playing a major role on a critical feature. Also looking at these staff level top paying companies, now you see more of the FANG companies pop up like Facebook and Amazon, especially when you get into the principal developer levels as you'll see soon. It's only these major companies like Microsoft and Google that can afford to pay these crazy exorbitant salaries. A lot of engineers don't even make it to the staff and principal level. Um, according to the founders of levels.fyi, um, staff and principal engineers only make up like 1% or 0.1% of all engineers. So your compensation is typically made up of three components. You have your base salary, stock, and bonuses. Now what's also interesting when you look at the principal level compensation is that a larger proportion of their compensation is tied to stock grants compared to lower level engineers. And given that their roles can have a larger impact on the business, obviously it makes sense that their compensation is tied to the performance of the company stock. Scrolling down further into the report, levels.fyi also has data on the median compensation in the top paying cities for software engineers. So the top three cities in the United States are no surprise, um, San Francisco Bay Area, Seattle, New York. Pittsburgh is number four, which I don't think anybody would have guessed. And that was one of the top comments in the Reddit thread. But um, upon further research, Duolingo is based in Pittsburgh and also one of the top computer science universities, Carnegie Mellon, is based in Pittsburgh. Now the top paying international cities are Zurich, Tel Aviv, Sydney, London, and Amsterdam. And number six is Vancouver, where I'm at. These international cities are also major cities with high cost of living, um, especially Zurich. All salaries in these cities are relatively higher. I'm actually really surprised to see Vancouver rank higher than Toronto, considering all I've ever heard is that the salaries in Vancouver are much lower than they are out east. Given that a lot of software engineering jobs are now going remote, I'm really curious to see how the data changes over the next few years. I was reading this article on CNBC and apparently tech giants like Facebook, Twitter, and Stripe, they are all cutting pay for remote workers who move out of San Francisco Bay Area into cheaper cities. For example, I've seen a ton of videos on people moving from California to Texas and you can even see on this chart that Austin, Texas is now one of the highest paying cities for software engineers. My prediction is that over the next few years, as people move out of San Francisco and into lower cost of living areas, these tech workers might potentially even raise the cost of living in those cities. So who knows, but I think that's a valid concern. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I will see you in the next one. Bye.